Now we lift our hands before the Lord and begin to give God thanks this morning for the privilege we have to be in His presence again. Lift your voice and lift your hands and celebrate Him. Give Him the glory that is due unto His name. Father, we thank You. We give You praise. We give You glory. We give You honor. We give You adoration. We celebrate Your faithfulness. You are worthy to be praised and to be glorified. Thank You for the privilege we have to be in your presence again today. We have come, O oh Lord, with gratitude within us to say, Father, we are thankful. We glorify you, we honor you, we give you thanks. You are worthy to be praised and to be glorified. Now begin to ask the Lord to speak to you this morning by his word. Lord, speak to me this morning by the instrument of your word. Let your word come forth in my direction, establishing my change of level. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy to be praised and to be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have to be in your presence. Thank you because we know that you are here with us. Lord, that you have said, blessed is the one you choose and cause to approach you that you may fill him with the goodness of your house. Today we are here before you fill us again. Let everyone depart with a change of level. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand and please be seated in his presence. It is my new dawn era. This morning we shall be commencing this series of teachings for the month of February entitled Every Commandment of Scriptures is for our profiting. Every Commandment of Scriptures is for our profiting. It's important for us to recognize according to Scriptures that everything God commands or instructs has the primary effect of bringing profit to the life of the believer. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17, it said, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. And why is it profitable? It tells us in verse 17, it said that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Very clearly, therefore, every time we see commandments, instructions from scriptures, they are ordained for our profiting. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible said the word preached to them was, was also preached to us and the word preached to them did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it. It was ordained to profit all but because some didn't do what was right with it, they could not enjoy the profiting of it. Every commandment of scriptures is ordained for our profiting. But obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any biblical truth. Obedience. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, the Bible said, He that hears this saying of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon the rock, and no matter what happened, the house remains standing. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22, down to verse 25, the Bible tells us, it said, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. He said, because he that is a hearer and not a doer is like a man that looks at his natural face in a glass and straight away forgets what kind of man he is. He said, but he that continues in the perfect law of liberty and is not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that man is blessed. Not every man, but that man. The one who commits himself to obedience. So obedience, therefore, is what proves the validity of any biblical truth. Doing whatever the word commands is what commits God to confirm his word. In the book of John chapter 2, 
beginning from verse 4 down to verse 11, Jesus and his disciples were at the wedding of Cana Galilee. And Mary said to him, the wine is finished. And suddenly said to those servants in verse 4, he said to them, whatever it, verse 5, sorry, whatever it says to you, do it. And he gave a commandment. Go and bring this water pot and fill them with water. Don't look inside the pot. Just put a cup inside the pot and take off the water there and serve it to the governor of the feast. And suddenly, in strange obedience, they took the pot, filled it with water, and took of that water that was in the pot and served it. And the man said, why is it that you have kept the best wine to the end? He said, others will put the best wine first and then later bring out the worst. They saw the miraculous take place as a result of their commitment to obedience. In Luke chapter 5, Peter had toiled all night from verse 1 to 8 and we see that he caught nothing. And Jesus came and said, now launch out into the, into the deep for a drought in the same lake, with the same boat, with the same net, but now a commandment. Go forth into the deep. And by that commandment, they caught a net breaking, boat sinking, order of breakthrough by reason of simple obedience. It doesn't matter what you have done before. It matters what you have done with what he has said. It doesn't matter what you have done before. You say, oh, I have done this before. No, but now he's saying to you, this is what to do. They had gone into the lake before. They had taken their boat to the deep before. They had cast their net into the right, into the right and the left side before. But this time, he had come with a commandment. And when you follow his commandment, you command supernatural results. For each one of us, that will be our experience in the name of Jesus. Therefore, passing the test of obedience is what qualifies believers for change of levels in the kingdom. If you want to see change of levels, then you must engage this virtue of obedience. It is obedience, passing that test of obedience that qualifies you for a change of level. In Genesis 22, God said to Abraham, after a long walk with him, he said to him, now take your son, your only son, the one that you love, and go to a mountain that I will show you. He said, and there, offer him as a sacrifice unto me. And Abraham arose early in the morning and began a trek for three days looking for the mountain that God has, will show unto him. And on the third day, the Bible said in verse 3, he, he saw there the mountain of God afar off and took his son there, bound him hand and foot, put him upon the altar to sacrifice him as God has commanded. And God spoke from heaven through the angel of God that appeared and said, now I know that you fear me. In blessing, I will bless you. In other words, I was only testing to change your level. Obedience is the test that secures our change of level. I pray that for each one of us this month and from this month forward, each one will begin to pass this test of obedience in the name of Jesus. You believe it, say loud, amen. I said you believe it, say loud, amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible said, We are with open face, beholding him, beholding him as in a glass. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Those who stay engaging with the Word will enjoy supernatural change of levels. You remember in James chapter 1, verse 25, he said, He that, con he that looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues continues therein. He stays engaging with what he sees in the world. He said, that man shall be blessed in his deed. For somebody here, I see the blessing of God coming upon you in unusual dimension in the name of Jesus. You believe it, say it loud, amen. I said, you believe it, say it loud, amen. You believe it, say it louder, amen. For example, when we obey the Matthew 6.33 commandment, we are brought into realms of favor supernaturally. It says there, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What others are struggling for is supernaturally added unto you. 
This is what it takes. In Psalm chapter 102, verse 13 to 15, it said, Thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the set time to favor her has come. Why? It said, Because thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the very dust thereof. He said, Therefore shall the hidden fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth will fear thy glory as a result of engagement. So there is a force of favor released upon the life of the believer through obedience. I pray that as we obey this Matthew 6, 33 law, each one of us will begin to see strange favor coming our way. Also, you discover that as you obey the law of tithing, you begin to experience the supernatural realms of financial fortune. It is obedience that brings it. It's not just knowing it, but doing it. The Bible makes it clear. It says, bring you all the tithes to the storehouse. Not think about it, not confess it, but bring it. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that they may meet in my house and prove me now. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. Prove me now. Bring it and prove me. In other words, the proof of the proofs of his word is released when we engage in obedience. He said, prove now if I will not release upon you, open unto you the windows of heaven and pour upon you a blessing that there is not room enough to receive. This is what God is showing to you and me today that it takes our obedience to the word of God to see the manifestation of that which is written. It takes obedience. God's servant said in a great encounter that he had with God, he said the Lord told him, he said that this, this area of prosperity, my prosperity plan does not answer to prayer and fasting. It's not a promise. It's a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not interested. You see, no matter what a person does, as long as you don't obey what he has said, you cannot see what he has provided. The provision of God answers practically to the obedience of man. I pray that for each one of us, grace will come upon our lives afresh for obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Obedience may be costly, but the end result of it is priceless. It may be costly to obey, but the end result of obedience is priceless. This morning, therefore, we are going to be focusing on the kingdom first commandment. The kingdom first commandment. The kingdom first commandment. The kingdom first commandment. And that is taken from Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first. It's important for us to understand that according to scriptures, we are commanded to seek first the well-being, advancement, and enlargement of the kingdom and all the things that others are dying to get will begin to find their way to us. Notice it did not say seek the kingdom, but seek first. Seek first. There are many people that seek the kingdom, but not first. There are many people who pursue after the things of God, but not first. God does not tell you that if you seek the kingdom, then all other things will be added. No. He says, if you seek it first, seek the kingdom of God first, seek the enlargement of the kingdom first, make it your priority. That's what God is saying. Until it is number one, you cannot have all other things added unto you. So it takes seeking the kingdom first. In the book of Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 19 from verse 27 to verse 29, the scripture tells us there, it says, it said, Peter answered and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all. Every other thing has been put behind. He said, and we have followed thee. What shall we have therefore? 
what will be our reward? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that which that, that ye which have followed me in this regeneration, he said, When the Son of Man shall sit upon his, the throne of glory, ye shall also sit on twelve thrones, judging the tribes of Israel. That is, your obedience has brought you to the realm of authority and enthronement. That's what Jesus was saying. So your obedience to him causes the things that others are pursuing after to come swiftly in your direction. In the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 28 down to verse 30, this is what the Bible says. He said, and Peter said, we have left all and we have followed you. He said, and he said unto him, verily, there is no man that has left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who will not receive manifold more where in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting so it impacts on us on the earth and impacts on us in eternity he said there is no man so that includes you and I there is no man who has left all of these things to follow after me to seek the kingdom that will not receive in this present time many fold more many fold more that simply means that no matter what serving God has cost you it will pay you more than that I have good news for you everyone mocking you they will watch God make you this season you believe it say loud amen I said you believe it say loud amen you believe it say a louder amen This is so important because a covenant to serve God is gateway to a world of all-round fulfillment. A covenant to serve God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12 to 15, we see there the Bible said that and they entered into a covenant. They didn't just take a decision, but they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart. And with all their soul, he said, and that whosoever will not seek the Lord should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. He said in verse 14, and they swear to the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpet and with cornet. And all of Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they have sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found of them. And look at God's response. And the Lord gave them rest round about. There is no department of their lives that was not affected. The Lord gave them rest round about. Family rest, financial rest, career rest, business rest. On every side, he gave them rest round about. Why? They entered into a covenant to seek and to serve God. We must recognize that your access to rest is tied to your covenant to serve. Your access to rest if you want to enjoy true rest, you follow the pattern of scriptures. It is tied to your covenant to serve. And look at verse 19 of that scripture. It said, and there was no more war. There, must, there was no more war. There, must, there was no more war for them. He gave them rest on every side by taking a covenant to serve. Now, if you look at their situation before they took that covenant, you go to verse 3 of that same scripture. It says, and for a long season, they had been without the true God, without teaching priests, and without law. And look at the result. And when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. In that time, he said there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But there was great vexation upon all the inhabitants of the country, everywhere turmoil. But one decision and one covenant they entered into a covenant to serve God and suddenly the torment was turned around for all round rest I don't know what the situation around any life may be but there is one covenant that can settle every department of life and it is the covenant to serve God 
they made that covenant with him and suddenly they began to enjoy all round rest that will be somebody's experience here today you believe it say loud amen I say you believe it say loud amen this is so important because serving God does not only pay but it pays the unmatchable you cannot match what serving God pays you you can't match it Look at what the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26. It said, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. He said, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He said, there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Let's look at that scripture in detail and you check it and discover there is nothing promised there that anyone can give you. No company can give you. Shell cannot give it to you. Chevron cannot give it to you. He said what? He said you will serve the Lord your God and I, he will bless your bread and your water. That is everything concerning your supply is settled. Your bread is settled. The Bible talks about the stay of bread. The supply of water. What it means is that anything God blesses cannot diminish. You can't lack food on your table. You can't lack water to drink when God blesses you. And that takes place by service. He said, I will bless your bread and your water. What else? I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Now question, what company can promise that? No one. The highest any company can promise you is health insurance. And health insurance simply means that when you do fall sick, they will pay to a certain degree for the sickness until the insurance level has been maximized. And then when you have reached the maximum level, they tell you, I'm sorry, your sickness is too serious. We cannot handle you in this place. Please be going. They tell you sorry and give you a termination letter on top of it. But here is God saying, I don't give insurance, I give assurance. Assurance means that health is sure for everyone that serves him. God doesn't give health insurance. Insurance is provided for the eventuality of sickness. But God gives health assurance that no matter what is happening, no matter the disease flying around the world, you are assured of health and vitality. That will be somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. I said that will be somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. It will take away sickness. It will take away diseases. He said in the next verse, he said, there shall nothing cast their young. I like that. That is no permission for miscarriage. No permission. There shall nothing cast their young. Not one thing. It means that by this covenant of stewardship, no matter the intention of the wicked, the woman that takes in cannot lose the pregnancy, can only deliver it. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? You hear people say in the world, oh, the pregnancy came down. No. For those that are serving God, it doesn't come down, it comes out. And it comes out as a child. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? There shall nothing cast their young. What else? He said, no be barren. So not only is there no permission for miscarriage, there is also no permission for barrenness. No permission. And he didn't say whether it's man or woman, he said nothing, whether male or female. So barrenness is not permitted by reason of this covenant. What else does he say? He said, the number of thy days he didn't say you will fulfill. What did he say there? I, God, will fulfill it. It means that in serving God, the person who wants to kill you needs to meet him first. I will fulfill it. I will fulfill it. So get busy serving God. Don't bother about those who are taking your name for incantation. God is seeing them. God is fully aware. And God said, let them try to touch you first and they will see my anger. The number of thy days, 
I will fulfill. God has taken charge of it for anyone that will enter into the covenant of stewardship. Therefore, I'd like you to note that this covenant of serving God, serving the interests of his kingdom as first priority is what brings us to this realm of unmatchable blessing. I see these unmatchable blessings coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Not only that, but serving God and the interest of his kingdom guarantees access to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. Noiseless breakthroughs. Job 36 and verse 11. The Bible tells us there, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey and serve me, that is breakthrough without noise. Just making advancement without struggle. God's servant gave us this very powerful illustration. He said, have you ever heard noise happening? And they say, what is going on? They say, it's because the day is trying to break. No. No. In the nature of everything that breaks makes noise. True of us. If your plate breaks, it will make noise. If your phone breaks, it will make noise. But when the day breaks, no sound. Noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. That's what God is saying concerning you and I as we commit to serving him. He said those who will serve me, he said they will spend their days in prosperity, no scarcity, and their years in pleasure. That is comfort. By reason of their commitment to serve me. That's what God is saying. So everyone who commits themselves to serving the interests of his kingdom will naturally begin to enjoy noiseless order of breakthroughs. Things begin to happen for you in an order that is strange, but yet without noise. Is somebody getting what God is saying? You are not struggling all around, just, you know, trying to make things happen. Things are naturally just happening for you. Why? Because of your commitment to serving God. I see that becoming somebody's experience. I said, I see that becoming somebody's experience. I see that becoming somebody's experience. You believe it, say louder, amen. I said, you believe it, say louder, amen. You look all through the scriptures and you see individuals who scaled heights by their commitment to God and you discover that they scaled heights without making noise. They scaled heights without making noise. You take a look at jo Joseph. He slept quietly in the prison one night as a prisoner. Woke up the next morning as a prime minister. No noise, but breakthrough. You find the man Daniel. Every time they are discussing who to raise, somehow, some way, even in the midst of his enemies, you find them continue to mention his name. There is a man in thy kingdom. Inside of him, there is found wisdom and understanding. This man sent for him and he has the answer to the problem. Suddenly he became a man that was sought after. No noise, but making news. For somebody here, I see that becoming your experience this year. That is no noise made anywhere, but news breaking forth everywhere concerning you. You believe it, say loud, man. I say you believe it, say loud, man. We also see in scriptures that seeking first the kingdom is the key to a world of supernatural favor. It is the key to a world of supernatural favor. And one of the very vital virtues for anyone to access is favor. Is favor. Favor makes things happen for you. It causes things to happen for you. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 1, we see Nehemiah with a passion and burden for the kingdom of God and began to pray from verse 4 down to verse 11, crying unto God concerning the state of Jerusalem, asking for an intervention. And in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible said, the king granted unto me according to the good hand of God that was upon my life. This man entered into strange dimension of favor by standing and seeking the kingdom of God first. Remember the Bible says in the book of Psalm 44 verse 3, it said they got not they got not the land in their own possession by their own sword. It said neither did their own arm save them. He said but thy right hand 
and thine arm and the light of thy countenance. Why? Because thou hast a favor towards me. God is simply saying the favor of God is beyond what any labor can provoke. When favor is at work, it will deliver to your hand beyond what your labor can provoke. There is supernatural occurrences on every side of your life when the favor of God is there. But the favor of God is at the cost of your commitment to advancing the kingdom of God and seeking it first. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. By that favor that came upon the life of Nehemiah, this man who was a cup bearer, a cup bearer means the person who carries the cup of the king. Can you imagine how long it will take a man whose only duty that he can write on his CV is I carry the cup for king? What other opportunity in life can he ever find? He was relegated to that place and he could have been there forever because who will employ a man whose only skill is carrying cup? But then suddenly by favor, the Bible tells us in Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 14 concerning him, he said, from the time I was appointed to be their governor, a cup bearer ended up a governor, not by any kind of political maneuvering, not by any kind of lobbying, not by any kind of struggling, not by sharing complimentary cards or writing appeal letters, but simply by the favor of God. For each one of us in this year, the things that no human effort can deliver shall be coming our way in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. The things that no human labor can offer shall be coming our way supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Amen. So seeking first the kingdom of God brings us into a world of supernatural favor. Favor that is beyond the natural. And when God favors you, there is no man that can disfavor you. I see that favor coming upon your life afresh. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's important to note that serving the interests of the kingdom of God as a lifestyle will turn just any believer to a living wonder. It will turn just any believer to a living wonder. A living wonder. A living wonder. In John chapter 14 and verse 21, this is what the scripture says. It said, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. He said, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. That is this individual will begin to experience the manifestations of God. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 11, the Bible said, he said, and they said that these are the men. He said, the gods have come to us in the likeness of men. They became practical manifestations of God. People saw things in them that they have never seen before. What eyes had not seen became manifested in their lives. Remember the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, he said, I had not seen, ear had not heard, it had not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So when you find an individual that is committed to the advancement of the kingdom of God, proving his love for God, that individual naturally becomes a living wonder. A living wonder. A living wonder. And that simply means people look at him and they look at him in amazement. They begin to wonder, what is happening? How did his story change like this? We used to know him before. He was our, my classmate before. He lived in my same neighborhood before. We were sharing the same room before. But what happened to him? What happened to her? They begin to wonder. You see, when he says, you are a living wonder, it means men look at you and wonder. They wonder, what happened? How did this happen? How did the story change? That will be somebody's experience here. I said that will be somebody's experience here. I said that will be somebody's experience here. That's what happens. Suddenly so begin to wonder and the Bible tells us that it will become so intense that in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 it said 10 men out of different languages of the earth. That means you will not be a local champion. He said they will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we will go with you because we have heard 
that God is with you. We have heard that God is with you. We will go with you. That's what takes place by reason of commitment to the advancement of the kingdom of God. Suddenly you become such a wonder that people begin to speak about you and begin to attach themselves to you. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. That's what it means. They begin to attach themselves to you. They begin to associate themselves with you. They begin, to, they begin to attach themselves. You see, one thing about, the, about serving God is this. When you start, at the beginning, people may distance themselves from you. But after they see the effect, they begin to associate themselves with you. Everybody likes to embrace success. Everybody likes to embrace success. When you are going on around, they're asking, oh, what are you doing? You are going to church again. You are praying again. Every time you are doing this, at the beginning, nobody dedicates the foundation of a building but it's only a matter of time. When the completion and the perfection takes place, then the gathering begins to happen. And I know that this year will be that year of perfection and beautification. Where people shall begin to gather around you to rejoice with you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. But take note, serving God and his interests must become a lifestyle for this to happen. A lifestyle that means making God first on a daily basis Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday it doesn't matter every day of the week every moment of the day God first God first is kingdom first at every point in time making him a priority that's why you hear so many testimonies of individuals saying I had this need I had this desire but I began to pray kingdom advancement prayer and suddenly God stepped in because in that moment of prayer, they made God first. They made the kingdom first. And God, therefore, began to take over their situation. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you can be expectant that as you engage in serving God and in serving the interests of his kingdom, that it will be turning you into a living wonder this year. You believe it? Say it loud, amen. Take note, however, that serving God is an open choice for whosoever is interested. It's an open choice. It's an open choice. He said in the book of Joshua 24 and verse 15, he said, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. So you make a choice. You make a choice. Choose this day whom you will serve. You make a choice for it. Serving God is a choice that we make. It's a choice that we make. And once the choice is made, it begins to decorate your life and destiny. Once your choice is made, it is a choice that we make. And that is why you and I must commit ourselves to making the choice. If you look at 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12, the Bible said, it said there that they entered into a covenant by their choice. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, God of their fathers. Not that they found themselves in a covenant, they entered into it. So we make a choice and a decision to serve God. And when that choice is made, the choice in turn begins to decorate us. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said I see that becoming somebody's experience here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know God is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter how long a person may have been in church until the choice is made, that individual cannot be remade. It is making the choice that causes the hand of God to remake and decorate your life and destiny. Making the choice. I remember last year in one of the outreaches, I met a man who had found himself walked away from God, just distant. And we began to minister. There were two of them. And one of them, this man in particular, made the choice and gave his life to Christ, surrendered to Christ, and began to come to church and serve in church. The other one rejected the choice because God never forces any man. But suddenly, within a few weeks, 
the man who was acting, who was out there on the road just like an area boy began to share testimonies and began to tell us, say, you will not believe what happened. Within, between that time and now, God has given me a car. My life has changed. I've started doing business. Everything is working for me. By a choice to serve God. And we ask him, where is that your other friend? He said, I don't know what has happened to him. Nobody has heard anything from him again. One choice made the other. The choice the other person made destroyed the other. So the choice we make is what eventually makes us. If you make a choice to serve, then the choice to serve will make you. I believe God for each one of us upon this mountain this morning that as we take our decision to serve God and the interest of his kingdom as a priority, we'll begin to see that choice decorating every department of our lives and destinies. This is the pathway to a struggle-free life. I pray that for each one of us, it will be our experience. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. You believe God, say a loud amen. I said, you believe God, say a loud amen. amen. Lift your right hand to heaven where you are and give God thanks for his word that you've received this morning. Appreciate him and glorify him. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of glory, worthy of honor and worthy of all adoration. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Before we go further this morning, if you are here today, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You have not yet made him the Lord and the Savior of your life. This is your opportunity. You can take that decision now. And that decision will begin to decorate your life and destiny. Wherever you are, you want to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, quickly rise on your feet right now. I want to pray with you. Quickly rise on your feet all over this place. Wherever you are, rise on your feet right now. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Also, there are those who are here. Who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus? Something went wrong along the way in your walk with God and you need to be returned so that you can be restored. Wherever you are, quickly also rise on your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly rise on your feet. I want to pray with you and you will have a new beginning. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise everywhere. It's worth your praise. If you have done that, in the first and the second call, make your way to the aisle closest to you and I'll be praying for you from there. Make your way to the aisle closest to you and I'll pray for you from there. Give Jesus a big hand as they begin to make their ways worthy of praise and of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Make your way very quickly to the aisle. Officials help them and guide them. Right now, please suspend filling your form for a moment and just lift up your right hand before the Lord and say these words after me from the depth of your heart with faith. Say after me, Lord Jesus, louder, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them here for you brought them here today and brought them into your family. I ask, oh Lord, that your hand that has drawn them will preserve each one of them. No turning back for any one of them. No returning to the vomit in the name of Jesus. Lord, by the grace by which you have drawn them, cause them to walk with you all the days of their lives. Thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen and amen. It is done. Please ensure that your forms are completed and then you return to your seat. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Please also take note, we have our foundation class taking place on Monday, tomorrow. Two Mondays you attend and then it will be for you a new beginning. Officials will get in touch with you and tell you the location closest to you. Shall we all rise on our feet and give Jesus a big hand as we receive our Father? Praise the Lord. Lift up those two hands to heaven and give God thanks for the word. Give God thanks for the word. Give God thanks for the word. 
and give God thanks for the world. And give God thanks for the world. And give God thanks for the world. Thank you, Father. Will you receive grace to seek for the kingdom of God? As your lifestyle is here, come and receive that grace. It holds the answers to all your questions, solutions to all your problems. Seek him for the kingdom of God. Seek him for the kingdom of God. Seek him for the kingdom of God. Will rewrite anybody's story. Now, Jesus rewrite my story this year. 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 Make me a bona fide partaker of this new dawn agenda. This new dawn agenda for 2018. Make me, make me Jesus a bona fide partaker of this new dawn agenda. Make me a bona fide partaker of this new dawn agenda. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand and get seated. There is always something doing for God and the interest of his kingdom in this church. That's why new things don't stop happening here. God has kept us occupying till he comes and he has not stopped manifesting himself in return. Now, beginning from this day, new things won't stop happening in your life. God is turning someone here to a newsmaker this year. God is turning someone here to a newsmaker this year. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Whosoever keeps to the vision, happy is he. See what happens every month when the prophetic theme of the month is released? There's a stirring of your spirit. Something is in stock for me this month. Now the question is, we know what is in stock for us this year, and God has given us a platform that will empower us to fully deliver his plan and purpose. God's plan for you and I this year is a new done experience. What is it? What is it? Where you begin to work in the reality of things that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Where you begin to experience the strange works and the strange acts of God. Where the exclamation about you will be, we have never seen it in this fashion. Now, those are the things in stock for us this year. In the same vein, God has ordained a new dawn order of growth for this commission this year in line with the prophetic word for the year 2018. New dawn order of growth. What is new dawn order of growth? Supernatural order of church growth. Inexplainable but undeniable is the order of growth that this church, every local church in this commission will experience this year. Noiseless dimension of explosive church growth. Noiseless. 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 
we don't hear the sound of the breaking of the day. The day breaks noiselessly. Noiseless dimension of explosive church growth has come to visit us this year. What is new order or new dawn of church growth? Strange dimensions of growth. Almost the whole city gather together one Sabbath to hear the word of God. We have seen strange things today. And he said, I'm the Lord, I chain all. So he has his strange works and strange acts still in place for his children. What is new done order of growth? The kind of growth that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. You will agree with me that by his grace we have seen quite some. But he said we have not seen anything yet. I said God, he said we have not seen anything yet. Yeah. But when God delivers a task, he delivers a rod to accomplish it. He delivers what? A rod. What has God given as the sequel for this kind of growth? The Holy Ghost said, we shall be engaging this year the sequel of prayer to fully deliver his new dawn order of church growth this year. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? All through scriptures, it's clear that the prayer sequel is the most effective sequel of harvest with capacity to bath every unsaved soul in the world into the kingdom. And to bath a nation at once into the kingdom. Who has had such a thing? Who has seen so things? Before she traveled, she gave birth? No. Before her package was delivered to a man child? No. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. We shall be bringing forth the kind of harvest never heard in the history of the Church of Christ. As we begin to engage the prayer sequel for the salvation of all the unsaved in our territories. Can I hear your amen? Our territory here includes members of our household who are not saved yet, extended family members, our neighbors, our colleagues at work, our business partners, our friends, our acquaintances, and all our loved ones that constitute the territory of each one. That's your primary constituency. You and I, we pray such individuals into the kingdom this year. Yeah. And by the signal of the Holy Ghost, we have this one operation that is tagged Operation Take your territory for Christ 2018. Take your territory for Christ 2018. This operation demands that you and I make a list of 24 unsaved souls in our territory engage in effectual fervent prayers for their salvation offer them compelling 
invitation into our church services. Many of them, as you pray for them, they will be the one to call you and say, I want to go with you to church. That is the story of one of our daughters here. The husband hated the word church. Nobody could talk to him. But this daughter of Abraham and the sister-in-law engaged in seven VGs, seven nights. At the end of it, the man said, I'm going to church today. Not that he had their prayers, because you can't pray anywhere around him. But the prayer caught up with them. Your prayer will catch up with multitude. Sometimes last year, as a God greedy man, I'm a God greedy man. Anything that God says, I want it all. As we got into the harvest season last year, I said to Jesus, give me a thousand souls this month. And so my team and I went out and God gave us more than a thousand souls that month. So, so cheap. Jesus, next time, give me a thousand souls this week. And the Lord did more than that that week. Now, let me tell you this. God will answer the prayer for salvation of souls before he answers any other. It is his priority for answers. Praying thy kingdom come is God's priority for answers. Watch, anybody you genuinely pray for on your list will fall for Christ like an overripe fruit. Yeah. You are going to see wonders that will build your faith to new levels. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What is behind this unending church growth movement? The Great Commission. The Great Commission. God does not want any man to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh, how many? Second Peter 3, 9. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth that's available in church. First Timothy 2, 4. So as long as you're saved are on our streets, in our neighborhood, everywhere, God's agenda for the unending growth of his church continues. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? What is the need for me? Rewards that labor can never attend to is a need for you. We have been told in the teaching, you serve the Lord, it will bless your bread and your water. No one in your generations will ever beg bread. He said, and I will take sickness away from you. You won't smell sickness again. You shall not be barren or cast or young in the land. Miscarriage is over in your life. None of your businesses shall be aborted. No more abortions in your body. He said, and the number of your days I will fulfill. Yeah. Untimely death is over in your lineage. Yeah. No one here shall bury their children. Yeah. You shall not bury your grandchildren. Yeah. What is the need for me? Entrumment is the need for you. You have been redeemed as a king to reign. You are ordained to reign in life with Christ. He that winneth souls is wise, and by wisdom kings reign. They that be wise will shine as the of the firmament and as the stars forever and ever. By your engagement in this operation, your enthronement will be established. Yeah. There are nobles I emerge from among them, 
and their government shall come from the midst of them, for they are engaging their heart to serve me, says the Lord. Everybody engaging his heart. It's your turn to be enthroned. Yeah. You engage your heart in this operation, it is your turn to be enthroned. Yeah. Therefore, every one of us, by a prophetic verdict, is required to deliver 12 standing established souls for Jesus between tomorrow, the February, well, February 5th, to October 7th, 2018. In the name of Jesus, yours will be delivered at the speed of light. Yours shall be delivered at the speed of light. Yours shall be delivered at the speed of light. This covers all age groups. Anna was praying and serving God day and night at 84. Moses was always on the mountain till 120 when he prayed his way to heaven from the mountain. David was praying three times a day as a teenager and still serving God, praising him seven times a day as a king. All age groups are covered. The three Hebrew boys, or four of them, took over the territory of Babylon. They were prayer giants. It's your turn. Yeah. And what is in it in you? As you take territories for Christ, it delivers your territories into your hand. Yeah. Many of you will emerge number one in your field. Yeah. Like a dream of the night to become a point of reference in your area. You belong to a number one church and life begets life. So you are a number one candidate. Yeah. And as you seek first the kingdom of God, your number one will become a reality. Yeah. As you seek first the kingdom of God, your number one will become a reality. Yeah. Therefore, we are all required to make a list of 24 names, 24 names, unsaved individuals in your own territory as earlier enumerated that you will deliver through the sequel of prayer into the kingdom. That's based on Ecclesiastes 11.6 that sow your seed in the morning in the evening we throw not your hand you don't know which one will prosper either this or that or both of them alike. So out of your 24, minimum 12, we bow. I said minimum 12, we surrender. Minimum 12, we surrender. Many people here today, before the first three months of this nine months is over, your own is fully delivered. How shall we walk the work of God? The work of God is to believe on him. Believe. Faith is what accomplishes any divine task. Believe, believe, believe. Believe, believe, believe. God spoke to me that the highest concentration of giants in these last days will come from this commission. Yeah. Highest concentration, come and say highest. Highest concentration of giants in these end times will emanate from this church. Yeah. I mean, you have thousands of top-range employers of labor. Tens of thousands of inventors. Tens of thousands of global-rated entrepreneurs. And all that will come from the platform of tireless stewardship, particularly spiritual stewardship. Get committed, get engaged. It's your year. Isaac sowed in that year in that land and received in the same year this is declared your Isaac order of year and the man went forward he was great 
till he become very great. And the Philistines envied him. Globally, everybody in your field will envy you this year. You must not miss this year. Don't play down on any prophetic instruction. That's where your answers and solutions are. That's where you're going forward is. Don't play down on it. Grab this with all your heart, with the two of your hands, carry it on your head, and watch how God decorates your life in return. This is declared your Isaac order of year. Everywhere you turn, it will show. Your mockery is turned to glory this year. Your lot is turned to plenty this year. And so shall it be. Stand to your feet. Therefore, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Operation Take Your Territory for Christ 2018 is hereby flagged up. Everybody on your list shall be harvested for the kingdom. Everyone on your list shall find their way into church and be free forever. And so shall it be. Now watch, I did this in the first service and second service, sit and pen. How many of you came to this church without any individual inviting you or reaching out to you? Let me see your hands up. You are in this service, this hour, and you just find yourself here. Let me see your hand. Now, would you please stand? Stand, let those ones stand. Now, you didn't just come. Somebody's prayer brought you. Someone's prayers brought you. So apart from your 24, you are still praying for all the unsaved across your harvest feet. And God is recording who your prayer has brought. You didn't just come. You were drafted in by somebody's prayer. Now, your prayer will draft many in this year. Your prayers will draft many more in this year. Suddenly, your church is named number one church, largest church in the world. That's the family you belong. Therefore, your global potentials will find sweatless expression this year. Suddenly, your pastor, your father, who has been serving God with his means, with a total sense of abandon, is rated the richest pastor in the world. In the same way, nobody in your lineage will taste lack and want. If you see this crowd, you know how effectual the cycle of prayer is in reaping harvest to the kingdom. It has capacity to reap a whole nation at once. Watch our prayer this year, what it will deliver the next three months. We will be singing a new song all together. Everybody stand to your feet as we close in this song. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Lift up your two hands. Now, receive grace to be a frontline partaker of operation. Take your territory for Christ 2018. Now, pray for that. Pray for that. Pray for that. Ask God for grace. Not to treat this one with levity. Ask God for grace. To put your best, the best of your best into it. Ask God for grace. That is on your life right now.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. I entered into a covenant with Matthew 6, 33, about 42 years ago. I'm still singing the song. Now, the grace for tireless stewardship, the grace for tireless engagement in kingdom advancement and divorce is released on your life today. I entered into that realm of all unrest since 1976. I decree your entrance into that realm of all around rest today. Yeah. Watch. What you have never imagined about yourself. What you have never imagined happen in your lifetime will come to pass this year. Nobody's new dumb package will be lost to carelessness. Yeah. Your new dumb package shall be undeniable this year. Yeah. You'll never know the meaning of sickness in your life again. Yeah. Everywhere you turn, favor will locate you. Before the first three months of this operation is over, something unthinkable has taken place in your life. Yeah. Go in peace. Yeah. Therefore, between the 5th of February, which is tomorrow, and the 7th of October 2018, your minimum 12th Standing and established souls are fully grounded in church. Yeah. Each of your harvest will also join in the race and bring their twelve. Yeah. And as the Lord live, by the seventh of October, this church shall be minimum three times its present size. And so is every local assembly across our church network. Yeah. They have given you copies of these. Please take time to read. Have you got your copies? Good. And you have your copy of Prophetic Focus for the month. And you have your copy of uh, War Be Scheduled for the Year. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Celebrate God for the privilege. Celebrate God for the privilege. It's a crisis-free year for you. It's a trouble-free year for you. It's a year of testimonies for you. Lift up your hands and give God thanks for it. Every prophetic word shall be delivering with the speed of light. At the speed of light in your life. Come and celebrate him. Magnify him. There is no one like Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in praise of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. It is my God of heaven. What eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, shall become the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Amen and amen.